three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Lift off. We have a lift off. 32 minutes past the hour. Lift off on Apollo 11. Welcome to Roots of Reality. I'm your host, Ben Bauman, and today we're going to be talking about phase one, in the beginning. Now, before I go on, I want to point out a scientific fact, and that is nothing in science is 100% true. Nothing. In science, you can know something 99.9%, but the other 0.1% is going to be speculative no matter what. And that is because Science is based off of what is most likely to be true, but nothing in our universe can be guaranteed. So now, I take you 13.8 billion years ago to the beginning of our universe. You see, at the earliest point in time in our universe, our universe was a small, dense, hot, energy-filled point of singularity. And milliseconds later, something amazing happened. Now, a lot of people confuse the Big Bang the most important event in our universe with an explosion. However, the Big Bang actually was an explosion. It was a rapid expansion of matter. And that's exactly what happened milliseconds after the Big Bang started. And as this expansion continued, it would eventually slow. And as it slowed, the universe would cool. And by the way, this expansion, it's still going today. Now, what caused all of this is unknown. But we can prove that this happened. And we know this due to basically the afterglow of the Big Bang. You see, when the Big Bang occurred, a huge light appeared throughout our universe. And this light, the remnants of it, are still visible today and can be seen by modern day telescopes and other instruments that astrophysicists and astronomers use. 13.6 billion years ago, the first stars formed. And 13.5 billion years ago, the early stars in our universe started to run out of their hydrogen fuel source, which is what all stars run on. It's kind of like running out of gas in your car. And instead of your car just stopping, instead of a star just stopping, if a star is big enough, when it runs out of its fuel source, it will actually explode based on what's called a supernova. And when a supernova explodes, it spreads all these heavy elements throughout the galaxy. And these elements actually make up you and I and everything that exists on our planet today. So without these supernovas exploding in our early universe, we wouldn't even be here today. It's kind of like a pinata getting smashed open by kids at a birthday party and all the candies just flying out. 13.4 billion years ago, we have the emergence of galaxies, including our own, the Milky Way. And our galaxy like all galaxies, are made from these large concentrations of matter, mostly the chemicals, hydrogen, and helium, which are molded together thanks to our friend gravity. Finally, 4.6 billion years ago, our solar system forms. And not much later, the planets in our solar system, including Earth, forms approximately 4.54 billion years ago. Now, I just gave you a brief timeline, a brief history of our universe. But to really fully grasp just how incredible our universe is, it's really important to hear some universal statistics, some numbers and figures that just make you sort of visualize how improbably amazing our universe is. So take, for instance, the raw material that makes up our universe. 4.6% of our universe is made of ordinary matter that we know and understand what it is. But 23% is what's called dark matter, which is an unknown matter that we don't even know what it is. And 72% of our universe is made of dark energy, which is an unknown energy. Now, for instance, when we get to the things inside of our universe, we know a little bit more. For example, the number of galaxies within our universe, there are an estimated two trillion galaxies, and within those galaxies are countless stars, and orbiting those stars are countless planets. So when you think of Earth, and you think about Earth and its solar system, and that its solar system is one among 
tons of other solar systems with stars orbited by planets. And then this is just among billions of galaxies. We are just a small speck in our universe. And that's assuming that our universe is just one when there could be many other universes out there for all we know. This then begs the question, though, we can understand our universe. We kind of know what's going on. But where is it leading us to? What happens to our universe? What is the fate of our universe? And that depends on two factors. First, is our universe open or closed? If our universe is closed, that means it can't expand. Eventually, it has to stop its expansion, and therefore, it will eventually collapse based on the idea of the big crunch. Now, if it's open, it can expand forever, but there's a problem with that too, because if it's open, our universe will continue to expand. And as our universe expands, the temperature throughout the entire universe becomes the same. Unfortunately, though, this prevents the energy in our universe from flowing through matter leading us to a point where there's no longer any usable energy left in our universe. As a result of that, there are no more stars that can form, and the stars that remain will be the last ones in our universe. And when they eventually burn out due to the lack of fuel, life in our universe will cease to exist. And this is what's called heat death. And this is a very popular idea that scientists have talked about for years and years and has been well studied. Now, before you start freaking out, calm down. It's okay. Because this will not happen for Google years. And no, I'm not talking about the search engine. I'm talking about 10 to the hundredth power. That is a one followed by 100 zeros. And that is the number Google. So before you quit your job and go travel the world and, you know, celebrate life, it's needless to say that this will not happen in your lifetime. Now, with all this in mind, obviously, at the end of the day, this can be kind of scary. It's weird to think about the universe ending, even if it's very far away from us. It, it seems like something that just, you know, how can it end? But I think what we should take away from this is not fear, but rather something to remind us of the importance of studying our universe and how fragile and delicate life is. You know, the more we understand about our universe, the closer we are to understanding our reality. And when we understand our reality, we become empowered. Because at the end of the day, no matter what happens, we're a part of this. You can cover your eyes, but you're still in the universe. And it's not going to change. Therefore, I leave you with this. The universe is an incredibly complex place, of course. But no matter what happens, you are a part of the universe. And the energy that makes up you, according to the first law of thermodynamics, can neither be created nor destroyed. It just changes forms. Thus, your time may be limited for whatever this thing we call life is, but the energy that makes up you will always remain some way, somehow, in this mysterious universe that we call home and whatever is beyond that. As always, this has been Ben Bauman. And remember, 13.8 billion years led to you. So make the most of your part of this story.